Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we were asked by the former Minister for Health to go and build a hospital. Um, and the main spec is uh, make it patient-centered. Uh, but he forgot to tell me not to do something else. Okay. We shifted from the old hospital, uh, which had a very nice big compound, Alexandra Hospital, up to the north there. Uh, we were very fortunate. URA gave us uh, quite a few plots of land to choose from. And this beautiful piece of land was just waiting there for us to grab. Uh, and uh, we chose it because the train station is nearby, but also mostly because there is a very nice storm pond right in front of the hospital. That pond doesn't belong to us, but we saw some potential in that pond. So that was why we chose this site to build that hospital. When we started work, um, it was just bare ground. Uh, there were three species of butterfly there and nothing else. Okay? Um, these are the specs that we gave the architect when we are planning this hospital. This hospital, of course, is located right in the middle of a matured housing estate. And uh, right from the beginning, we wanted to build a building that doesn't overwhelm the neighborhood. It becomes part of the neighborhood, and this was just a spec. And uh, we wanted tropical design because uh, Singapore is hot and humid. Uh, we also pr projected that the energy cost will go up quite a lot in the future. So therefore, we wanted it to be very energy efficient. So a lot of the things that we did was one, to build a hospital to take care of patients. Two, to make sure that when we operate it, it doesn't cost too much, all right? And it's comfortable for the patient. Our philosophy was actually to, to add to the neighborhood, to become part of the neighborhood and instead of becoming an obstacle to, to other neighbors, uh, and also in terms of nature too, we wanted to be a part of it and, and add to it rather than subtract from it. Uh, because I'm going to show you a lot of slides on greenery, I thought I have to remind you that we are first and foremost a hospital. <laughs> okay? And this is a very high-tech hospital, uh, and uh, we, we have all sorts of technology and all sorts of things in there that take care of very critically ill patients and we save life. Um, these are just some of our facilities, and note that most of our windows uh, have brought down to the, almost to the floor level so that the patient lying on the bed could see outside. And, Almost every patient, whether in a waiting area or in the, in the, on the bed, they will see greenery outside. All right? So if you look at the window, and most of them you see some greenery out there. And of course, a reminder again, that this place is losing out our years with technology and all the stainless steel stuff. All right? But having added all those things, we wrap it up to make it as comfortable as possible for our patients and staff. And of course, also to take care of nature. So this is the end product. All right? uh, this is the entrance of the hospital. Right next to it is a, a nice big pond, all right? Uh, and throughout the whole project, we have water flowing through it, uh, and we planted lots of plants, uh, to, like, uh, as though there's a stream flowing right through, uh, from the hospital level one to basement one, and then to level one again. And the balcony planting uh, is about 1.4 kilometers long, uh, and we had a green replacement ratio of more than four meaning for every square meters of land that we took away, we actually add more than four square, kilometers, square meters of greenery because of all the vertical planting on the balconies and, and on the roof. Right, right from the beginning, uh, we involve our staff a great deal uh, because we wanted them to plant because when they plant, they have a sense of ownership. So they were planting not just inside the hospital, but around the neighborhood. And we plant lots and lots of jungle trees because the jungle trees will grow to 30 meters high. So we, we thought that one day, the whole neighborhood and our hospitals will be totally shaded from the hot sun. So that was our intention. We were very fortunate. Uh, lots of people came in and uh, joined us, including NPAC staff, uh, who spent his spare time coming to the hospital to help us with the, with the support of their boss, actually. And we have nature lover, we have architects, and we have all sorts of people coming in. These two volunteers uh, help us design the pond system, and after that, they spend thousands of dollars of their own money to put in the fishes okay, into this, this, this pond. About two years before we completed the project, uh, we found a group of residents pottering around nearby, and they were very proud of their vegetable plot. Unfortunately, they were going to be evicted because the, the land will be leaf developed, and uh, Basically, out of friendship, uh, we offered them some space on top of the roof of the hospital and say, why don't you come and do it? We were actually a little bit worried because we were worried that it would be untidy and the insects and all that kind of stuff. You know? uh, but to our great surprise, uh, after they had done that, uh, the, when we asked our patients, they love it. 
because they say they are bored to death lying around on the bed, you know, so they're looking out at the roof and seeing people pottering around was a great stuff. So this thing has turned out to be very good, and we now have 140 fruit trees on the roof, and we produce lots and lots of vegetables up there. And uh, we don't eat all the fruits. Uh, lots of birds are, are going up there to share the fruits with us. Uh, and uh, it's now very lively up on the roof, not just with human beings, but with birds as well. And these are just some of the, the fruits that are, are bearing fruit on, 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 the, on the rooftop now. All right. uh, we were very fortunate. Uh, our friends in N Park, uh, URA, uh, PUB, uh, they were very open uh, about helping us and working together with us. Remember the storm pond in front of us? It used to be quite ugly, all right? And uh, it was very bare. You can see all the granites on the side, and you can see all the granite walls. Well, after all the discussion, we managed to get all the government agency to put their budget together with us, and we call for one single tender, and they create a totally seamless park now. So this is what happened now, and you can see that uh, HDB has got a nice tower to go into the park, and PUB has planted all the plants, uh, including floating islands and all, and it's now attracting the wildlife and everything around that area. One, one round is one kilometre long, so it's now the exercise park as well. Uh, the whole project now, including the hospital, has become a public park uh, for the neighbourhood. And this is a typical scene every day. You have students from the neighbourhood coming round to the hospital to study here. And you find parents bringing in their children to go and enjoy the park and look at the fishes and, and all that kind of stuff. But aside from people, this project is also a conservation project. We planted largely indigenous plants, well, lots of jungle trees. And we wanted to bring in 100 species of butterfly. Uh, we wanted 100 species of birds to be around there, and also we wanted 100 species of fishes to be there. Uh, and, and we have a lot of people helping us to, to get, create the right environment to, to bring them in. And we count them. So the butterfly interest group, they actually come in and audit. Uh, we are still a little bit away from 100 species, but uh, we have now hit about 36 species of butterfly. We are fairly confident in, in about a year or two, we probably will hit 100 species. Uh, the fish, we now have got about 96 species. And we do something very simple. We have pots of water like that. We plant water plant, and we put two or three fishes inside. And then that's where we are breeding the dragonflies as well. All right, now the dragonflies and dame flies are, are now coming into the compound. All right. um, so this is what we more or less have tried to achieve, is eventually to become a hospital within the tropical rainforest, which I define as not more than 2% of the sunlight managed to hit the ground. <laughs> okay, it will take us a few years, uh, before the trees are matured enough to cover it up, but I think we are increasingly seeing that, that happening in the hospital. All right. The critical success factor is our mindset. Some people have a scarcity mindset. When you ask them to do something, this is their reaction. This is such a difficult thing, such a big thing. We have so little resources, so few people, it can't be done. So they don't do much. The opposite of scarcity is abundance. When you ask people with abundance mindset to do something, this is their reaction. Wow, this is a beautiful thing, the small part, all right? The small little circle. And I'm sure we can find lots of people out there who will love to do this with us. The people with abundance mindset soon gather a whole bunch of people to do the thing. And I like to think that this project was successful because we had a lot of people with abundance mindset coming together to say, let's do it. The second thing is, there are people who can only look at a pile of shit and they worry and they worry. Every time they do something, they worry about everything that can possibly go wrong. The opposite of that is people who see fertilizers. All right? And they look at everything and say, whatever it is, I'm sure we can turn it around and do something good with it. And again, I like to think that this project is reasonably successful because there are lots of people who saw shit as fertilizer and turned whatever that was bad into something that is good. And we are now enjoying it. Thank you. Thank you.